And uh, well, there's five of us today, which is quite exciting. We've got the Skype link up happening, and uh, I'm joined by Rajiv, who's with me on this side. So this is weird for you guys. You've got now like two people to look at on the screen. <laughs> We're multiplying. We're multiplying. So you wouldn't have uh, ever thought that the screen was big enough to fit anyone else but my head on it. But there we go. We've got two people on this week, so it's all good. Um, so Rajiv is one of the demonstrators for the Oculus Rift. So this comes back to Sean and his uh, VR experiences of the last few months. I'm sure uh, of, of, out of all of us, Sean's probably got the most questions for Rajiv about the Oculus Rift and, uh, and VR. I'm an expert on VR now, on the Sony PlayStation VR. I'm not really, but... Uh, yeah, so Rajiv, uh, for the Oculus Rift, the touch controllers just came out, or they're just about to come out, is that right? I think they've just come out. Yes, I believe the release date is December 6th. So, uh, literally so tomorrow. I know someone who just got them today, so... Oh, oh. Them early. oh maybe on pre-order, because they uh, they did their uh, the touch launch on Monday just gone. So they had their VIP event and had a few celebrities and stuff come down and some... Uh, bloggers and vloggers come along and check out the content. Was this the one with Mars Bar Vlogs? He was there? Yes, that's right, yes. I watched that, it. That was the event I was at, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah I was so I was jealous because I wanted to be there so much. <laughs> yeah, he was um, I would say he was playing Dead and Buried, the multiplayer. And, um, Dead and, and, Buried and I know game. when you left, they've offered them an Oculus Rift and the touch controllers and the graphics card to play it. There might have been some perks for the VIPs um, <laughs> Man, coming along to that event. Let's do it. I'll, I'll have yeah. a word and see what they can do. Uh, yeah, so the, t the touch controllers. Now, I've tried out the HTC Vive ones and obviously I've got the Move controllers here for the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation Move one, it's got its limitations with the fact that it's with the forward-facing camera. The HTC Vive I found was rock-solid, Really nice and intuitive to use, but they were a bit big. Now, these touch controllers, they're a little bit more ergonomic, it looks like. They pick up your finger movements as well, which seems like a, a little bit more advanced than the HTC Vive ones. Yes, so they have two triggers. One uh, which sits, uh, which is triggered by your middle finger, um, which allows you to pick up items in the environments. And then you've got your index finger, which acts like a trigger, um, which then also pulls down the fingers so you can pick up items, point, shoot. That kind of stuff as well. Yeah, and um, what's the plans with like room scale VR for the Oculus? Because I know it comes with the extra sensor now, but both of them are forward facing sensors. And I heard there was going to be an option to buy a third one you could put behind you potentially. I think they're looking at doing an option for that. Uh, obviously, I, I they haven't told me that, but there there is an option to set up a third. Um, but the two forward facing ones, um, they've also got something called Guardian set up. So it gives you uh, like a barrier, a perimeter in, in the zone so that you can um, know where you're working in and where it will be unsafe. Yeah. So that's kind of similar to the chaperone system from the HTC Vive, same kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, that kind of idea as well, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, one of the other things I was going to ask about uh, the controllers, I know that they take one battery each. They take one normal battery. Yes. Is there going to yeah, be an option right. to have like chargeable batteries, rechargeable ones? I can't say because I don't represent the company, <laughs> but um, they have. We have used rechargeable batteries in them uh, in the past. Um, whether they're going to do their own one, uh, so you can actually charge the handsets, uh, they haven't said. But um, the ones that we use, I've seen the new, the release versions, which are different from the prototypes that I was using at demonstrations, um, and they are slightly better in their design. And um, yeah, but at the moment they just take standard batteries. Yeah. So have you tried the other ones, the PlayStation VR Move and the HTC Vive? I haven't haven't tried the PlayStation one. I have tried the Vive. And obviously um, Oculus is better. Well, I'm not. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> not just because I do the demos. I, I found I found um, the the touch just a bit more ergonomic. Yeah. Um, it felt more comfortable in my hand. Where I found the HTC Vive was a bit clunky in my hands. Mm. Um, you've, you've really just got to hold on to the um, to the touch and it feels like an extension of your arm like you look down and you see hands in the environment as well Yeah. Uh, and it just really does feel more natural to me I'm so jealous of it, the only one that hasn't had a go in any virtual reality <laughs> world and if 
anyone needs a virtual reality world to live in, it's me. So. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just one last thing. Is, is there anything games-wise that's on the horizon? I know there's one that they showed the show, the Oculus Connect event, the Connect 3 event, where it was the one in space where you grab onto things. It looked really amazing because they were addressing the movement issues where you were always touching something. Uh, I know that's one that everyone's looking forward to. But is there anything else that you were able to tell us about? Or um, I know that they'll be uh, given a game called Robo Recall, um, which is a great demo for first-person shooter. Um, mm -hmm. Teleporting around and being able to interact with the content in loads of different ways. That's a great one. Yeah. Um, the Dead and Buried multiplayer as well is fantastic, so you can play over the network um, and the internet with friends. Um, it's, we were playing that and I got lost in that for quite some time well that's uh, us screwed I mean, straight away you said we're friends oh, well we're screwed <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know seeing as Michael hasn't had a go there's four of us so it's uh, four players so that's fine we've got cool. it covered <laughs> <laughs> awesome I'm really looking forward to trying it out like. as soon as you get a go it's awesome it's fantastic and hopefully you'll feel the same way as, as I have because it's been great fun demoing them yep. but I'm not going to lie, I get I get a lot of play time on it as well, and uh, it's, well, it's good fun. Rajiv, the studio address is, is on the website. You're welcome to get, get a VIP <laughs> ticket this week. I'm Three, making four, a note now, don't people. worry, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> In the demonstration process, we have um, something called Dream Deck, which takes people through a series of VR environments just to get them familiar with the idea, because obviously putting on a headset and you're standing in an environment, it can be quite... Uh, overwhelming for some people so um, it's a good introduction and then you naturally see people putting their hands out to want to touch and feel things when they can't so then that's a great chance to show them the touch controllers mm -hmm. and then um, and, and it's quite intuitive once you realize what the controls are and most of the games will give you instructions on how to use them in each game so um, people kind of pick them up fairly quickly we had people who had never tried VR before using them at the at the event and you know it took them a few minutes and they were fine well, well one of the things we've discussed here in the last few weeks was uh, michael keeps on asking us do we think it's a game changer vr is it the future what's your impressions is it something you think is it going to be a massive massive adoption or is it just something that's gonna be a fan it's going to fade away uh, i think i think it's going to be a big thing but i think we're obviously just at the beginning i actually i'm not a gamer so uh getting involved with the VR side of things really did take me back and I was like really really amazed by it I mean the last proper games console I had was an old school uh, Game Boy when they were grey <laughs> and the old bricks so um, and I've got a bit of an addictive personality so I was hooked on that for hours but uh, yeah do, doing the VR stuff I think it's it's a great start and it's already amazing as it is so I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the next five 10 years that's going to come yeah. um, I think it's going to be just super impressive of what's going to come I don't know what's going to come but I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen so, and I hope I get to work with it along the way <laughs> So if you don't mind me asking for people who are getting some Oculus touches when they come out what sort of key titles day one would you recommend people trying out and going and getting to experience the best of what they have to offer If they buy the touch what I've been told is that they will get some um, content with it as well to download from the Oculus Store. Uh, VR Sports, which is just a good idea to get a feeling. Uh, you can shoot basketball hoops, um, throw an NFL ball if you're like mid play, and there's a nice hockey game in that as well. Um, and the Robo Recall, Recall uh, is another great one to try out. I think I think those two are the best because they are two very different things. Um, and then if you've got friends who've got getting a rift and a touch, then uh, obviously uh, dead and buried the multiplayer, um, which is great fun. But the VR sports and Robo Recall are a great one to to practice and get used to the movements and everything in the controls. I think it's uh, really good. Awesome. <laughs> and um, and uh, Rajiv's going to be sticking around. So if you weren't a gamer before the start of this episode by the end of episode six you will be and that addictive personality will be back I'm afraid so, uh, so there we go the Oculus Rift how cool though I mean what a great job being a demonstrator for VR going and going to places and, and uh, showing people how to, to do something which is just so much fun wouldn't I, I would take that job you guys I know. Oh, yep, I'm so definitely. jealous <laughs> is your job <laughs> going <laughs> yeah serious question here Rajiv what, what, what's on the what's on the horizon here job wise um, well well, uh, I'm, I'm looking myself actually. I'm trying to see, uh, <laughs> well, see how I can get myself a rift. <laughs>
Okay, so that's the Oculus Rift, and uh, it's been a big week in uh, gaming. I mean, when I say a big week, I, I think we'd have to have a seven-hour show to try and catch up. Oh, so good. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I was just sitting there, just like, mmm, all the games. <laughs> as I'm just like, mmm, yes. <laughs> oh, it was great. All right, well, let's let's start with the Game Awards uh, 2016 then, and uh, we've got a list of some of the winners. Yeah, we've got all of them here. Oh, we do. I've been past the list now, I think, because I felt left out. <laughs> um, like I didn't have any paper. Do you, what what would you like to hear from? Because there's quite a lot, actually. Uh, all of them, Kat. All of them, from start all to finish, them. in great detail. Oh no, no, God. you know what? Pick, I have to pick read the, the best. As well. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I'm just kidding. Um, pick the pick the three your three favourites. Oh, okay. Let's take a wee second. Mm. Dun, 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 we can put ah! we can put the count. Ah, oh, this is dun, dun, so dun, difficult. Dun, dun. Well, do you know actually what I was really interested in? Um, was the Games for Impact award? Did anyone see okay. anything yeah. about that? I, I actually watched. That um, was the guy, the the cancel one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the the winner of Games for Impact was um, that Dragon Cancer. Is what it's oh called. yeah, that's the iPhone and is it the iPhone and mobile game that uh, you? It's the cancer, the ch the child with cancer. Is that? Yeah, yeah. I think it's just. Steam. I'm pretty sure it's not. I don't oh, think really? it's a console or anything. Yeah, because um, I, as soon as I like saw that, I looked it up because I thought that sounds like something I would really, really want to play. Um, I watched the the speech of the the gentleman who accepted the award. It was his son actually that the game was based yeah. on. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really emotional actually. It was Matt Pat. YouTuber who presented the award and yeah, it even made him sad and he's he's a very jolly guy. Yeah, yeah. It was really sad, it was it was really poignant. So I'm really interested in trying that one out if I if it ever comes to PS4 or anything like that. Mm. Um let me see. What else? Best art direction, actually. Uh, inside got that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I've started it, I haven't finished it. It is really, really atmospheric though. Mm -hmm. I'll give it that. It's really, really cool art wise as well. It is quite like limbo in that way. Same, same so, company, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. The same people. But it is, it's really cool. Um, and if I'm picking another one that I'm interested in. Best VR game. Is that on here? Yep. I remember seeing it, but I feel like there's a bit missing. Or Best I'm, VR game was Rez on the PlayStation VR, which I was totally hmm. surprised about because it was up against things like Eve Valkyrie, which, yeah. Yeah, considering the sort that. of content that they've come out with, and the fact that it's multiplayer and all that stuff, I'm surprised that Rez won that. I, it's a game I've heard nobody talking about, and like yeah. I actually know people who Rez 1 was their favourite game of all time, so seeing Rez VR come out and them barely even talking about it, I was mm. like, I thought it was just like, oh, it's just a generic I know, it's, I know it's pretty good, I know it's been upskilled and everything for the content. Was there anything controversial, anything that you guys really just disagreed completely with? It's not an easy thing to find winners of awards because there's a lot of good games out there. Wasn't there one of them for Pokemon Go on one of the games? Uh, yes, Pokemon Go I think won two actually, did it not? It won um, best family game and I think best... Family game? Best um, what, mobile. What's going on there? Else. It's not really a family uh. game. You go out and... What would you say it's a family I game? I would say it's a family game because it's like the first family game I've friendly. ever played with my mother and grandmother. Really? So Aww. it's like, I would in that sense call it a family game. I suppose fair enough then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up Anton in this one. I think, I think that it encouraged people at least to go and speak to people in the family about something, you know, mutual and, and get outside and yeah. go for walks and things. So yeah, from that point of view, I, I think it could probably uh, be classic. In my head, I've just got this image of Nintendo with their sofa as a family playing games yeah. on Wii. So like when you said Pokemon, I was like, what? There's people walking around with their phones. So it just kind of seemed yeah, detached from I it. I get what you mean there. I think I disagree. I haven't played Uncharted 4, I'm going to say it again. I haven't done it. Oh. So I'm, maybe I'm not allowed to disagree with this. But <laughs> um, the winner for best performance was Nolan North as Nathan Drake. You all know my feelings for Nathan Drake. Um, and against um, people like Rich Summer and Sissy Jones, which were the two actors from Firewatch which was amazing. 
Amazing you know, I, I, amazing I, voice acting. Mm, I don't understand mm, I, how it, there's this app. Just because Nolan North is it based movie. on more movement stuff though? Is that what is motion caption and voice stuff? No, because um, in Firewatch you don't see anybody. But that's what I'm saying. In in so, like, Uncharted, he does the motion cap as well. But I think it means like voice performance, like is generally it? acting performance. And I just, I'm sorry, but I feel like it's just because it's Nolan North. It's the only reason he won that. Mm. I'm sorry if that's controversial to say, but do you know what I mean? He it's is like, like a bit of a superhero though. Nolan North, you know, it's like Clark Kent. It's a cool, <laughs> it's a cool name, but he shouldn't win an award for that. Like just he's in everything as well. Cool name, name of the year award. award. Best name of the year. We should just make up new categories. Best name, name of, of the year. year. Name, name of the year. Name of the year yeah. and cutest executive. No, because I, oh. I just want Miyamoto to get up on more stages because he's adorable. Well, yeah. Did you see him on Apple? Adorable. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I think. I think. Um, I think Nolan North for sure for for name of the year. Uh, I I kind of agree with you though, Kat. I think that it's he's one of those characters uh, in Uncharted that, yeah, it's it's there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with what he does, but it's just very generic uh, exactly. lead character in video game type guy, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But certainly it's not innovative in any way. So uh, anyway, speaking of innovative, innovative, depending on how you want to pronounce it, maybe you have a different pronunciation altogether. I innovative. don't know. It doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really matter either way. Innovative is fine. If that's the way you want to go with it. Uh, it's the it was the third annual PlayStation Experience Community Expo, and uh, some interesting news from that one too, guys. Some yeah. so pretty cool much stuff. Yeah. News. That combined with the Game Awards has just given us so oh, yeah. many announcements. Game Awards wise, also, yeah. can I just say the highlight for me? Not even the awards. I know. I literally... Death Stranding, everybody. I'm... Yeah. Oh my god! I had to. I slapped my thigh there. I was so impressed with it. Like, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> highly amazing. impressed. Yeah, I think this year has been the best year for announcements at the Game Awards. Mm. Like Jeff Keighley's just like, "Hey, <laughs> you want to come over here?" <laughs> so we've got a lot from Hideo Kojima because mm. we've obviously got the Death Stranding gameplay that look eh, not gameplay, excuse me, trailer Teasers. that um looks very Hideo Kojima-esque. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so good. So, but talking about that, did any of you hear the drama with Hideo Kojima and Jeff Keighley exposing what was happening to him at the last Game Awards? No, but I knew about that from before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he wasn't allowed. Yeah, to, like yeah. Kaoli was. Apparently he was locked on his floor in their building. He was literally at the Kojima building. Kojima was locked onto a separate floor from his team for the last six months of the development of that yeah, game. Yeah, really? I heard about it. Yeah. We're Metal Gear Solid, mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. all about Konami, all that's their internet. Konami. We're making games, for God's sake. We're not like <laughs> so, <laughs> hijackers. Yes. Um, so, well, we just run through some of the announcements from Game Awards and then move on to PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. So, after Norman Fetus Simulator, we have Dauntless. <laughs> um, any of you been interested in that? It's Dormus? a new MOBA, that... new team. No. no. Uh, all right, Sorry, that's everyone. exactly no. what I thought. I was like, oh, this is pure man's League of Legends, maybe. <laughs> who knows? But it's CG, so who knows what it's like. Um, Trend and Gamer, Boogie2198. Yeah, um, like Boogie, Boogie, Fran Francis, isn't it? Yeah, Francis, yeah, I was like, oh, hun, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got pre-gameplay. Um, any yeah, of you is interested in Prey? I'm a bit interested in that. So I know you're like the possessed of I'm a bit of a possessed of person. <laughs> yes, I'll be interested Did in you... that. I do like looking at it. I actually had something to ask. Uh, I was about to say the Bethesda fanboy there, but do we say fanboy or fangirl now? I don't know. <laughs> Fan person. I think Fan person. We're being gender yeah. neutral <laughs> here. <Precisely. laughs> Just wanted to clarify that. So. Um, yes. Uh, feel free to jump in, guys. I'm, um, <laughs> we've got a list to go through. Zelda gameplay. That was the big hype trailer. People are talking a bunch about nice that. Nice seeing some of the village stuff and some of the bits like that, a bit more sort of action going on. However, people were complaining about the frame rate. It's like, it is the Wii U version. There's still about six months to go. Well, maybe four, four months to go. Uh, depending on when it's going to come out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think people are a little bit worried about that and they shouldn't be. I think it's probably going to be all right. So I was a bit relieved because I feel like the E3 trailer looked like garbage. Like there was no foliage. Mm. It looked undetailed. This one looked great. Like it was so much detail this time around. But I'm scared they've sacrificed frame rate to achieve that. Mm. That's um, why we all have to get switches though. So that's all yeah. Right. Hey, this game's broken, buy our Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, they've never heard that happen before in the gaming industry. What? When has that ever happened before? Uh, no, in the exactly. slightly, you know. um, 
Shovel Knight. Any of you guys? Spectre of the was it? Spectre of the Torments. Spectre um, of the Torments. It's a free DLC, free campaign. Mm. Uh, Yacht Club games have been amazing with uh, Shovel Knight. They've, all their updates have been free for mm. Wii U owners. I don't have to charge to other people if it's on other consoles. Is it on it's, it's, on it's free for everybody, I believe. It's free other for stuff. It's on Vita. Dude. Yeah, it's uh, really impressive. And you know, that was like was it a Kickstarter campaign. That was wasn't it? Uh, I'm not too sure. Sorry. I'm pretty sure the original version was a Kickstarter campaign. It got funded pretty quickly because it was the guys that were based on, I forgot what company it was. It wasn't Rare, was it? No, no, no. The next I think Rare that's, Devs? That's your Kai Light. Ah, and that's Platonic, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they were an ex company, I can't remember who it was. <laughs> but yeah, they were sort of kind of famous for doing games and they came in with that. Got massively funded and it's just old school amazingness. Done really, really well. And yeah, the fact that the updates are all, all free, awesome, awesome stuff. This is how things should be done in Kickstarter. The Walking Dead, a new frontier. Anybody interested? <laughs> stares intently at Cat. Are you interested? <laughs> Are you amused? Yeah. Um, and also Dead Rising, Christmas trailer. That was awesome. Is that Dead Rising 4? Um, no, new Dead Rising. Oh. oh yeah, Dead Rising 4, sorry, yes. Yeah. Oh, was that the picture that they put up said, like, Merry Christmas, and they said we're going to show it today? Um, Had the camera hanging from it? Oh no, it was just a new trailer they showed off and it was showing off the That's story. That's all it is though. Oh, yeah. Aye. Because people, pe people thought it was maybe Alan Wake or something. Mm. <laughs> Mass Effect Andromeda gameplay. Does that amazing? Nice. <laughs> yes, absolutely. In fact, I was about to say that I would have been absolutely delighted if there had been new Alan Wake material. I'd have been really chuffed and really excited about that. Loved Alan Wake, even though there was a lot of flaws with it. Uh, had a great experience playing it. Very atmospheric, but also just one of those games. I love the games where you don't quite know what's happening and you don't quite know where you are. Um, and it was great. It, it was really, really flawed and there was a lot of problems with it and it wasn't, it wasn't going to win um, as many awards as they maybe thought it might have done with the 17 year lead into it or whatever it was um, but it was still uh, a, a really good experience and as for Mass Effect Andromeda yes very excited I didn't get any chance to see this so Anton please tell me the gameplay looked good um, it looked pretty um, the environments looked very detailed there's like so much animation and stuff going on um, the combat seems to be more like the stuff they were doing in Mass Effect 3 um, there's a lot of jumping about it's very fast pace and I see them like darting through the sky and that's the best description I can give but it looks <laughs> incredible <laughs> and apparently they're claiming that every single planet is going to have its own story um, seems a little bit like No Man's Sky oh <laughs> and we, we don't talk we don't mention no don't mention story it. and No Man's Sky were never connected what's a No Man's Sky although, although <laughs> didn't they announce the big update for that yes um, they've got a new update for that that introduces building settlements Mm -hmm. And so you can use that to like have storage there. You can have guys that like work there and get races. You can build up your economy and mm. essentially you can transfer things back and forth. Is it is it going to redeem the failure of the initial launch? Who knows? No. Uh, I think no. I think the ship has sailed <laughs> the there. The ship has sailed exactly. Uh, I think maybe the yeah. line with a No Man's Sky two where they just actually add in like a more open game. So it's, I think that's the direction they're going with their DLCs. It's making it more open in like maybe a Minecraft style way. Do you even think they'd get funding for that after what happened with the mm. controversy around the first one? It's been taken. I've never seen. Mm. I've never seen a game where it's had such brilliant reviews in the first hour or two of release and then such terrible reviews after about 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that coming, to be honest. Yeah, mm. I, honestly, I was never excited about it's it. It's like, same. yeah, it's like, what, what, like, in the hype of it, it was like, all right, so what's this about? And then if you were trying to describe it to anyone, you are like, oh, well, you just have a spaceship and uh, you just, everything's random and you just fly around. Yeah, yeah. Just, it seems so yeah, kind of... and That's the game. And you're like, oh, that's so cool because there's so, so many choices and openness and whatever. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. People don't want that. Yeah. I'm sorry, but nobody knows what to do. I don't know what to do in my life and I have schedules. Like, <laughs> So how am I supposed to know what to do in a game where there's no schedule and there's nothing and there's nothing making me do anything? The, I'm sorry, yeah. everyone. The thing I found interesting when they showed that off, they were showing off, they're like, here's our new game. Incredible. And we're like, what? What, what, what do you do in this yeah. game? And then they're like, planets! There's planets Plan everywhere. There's a million, Plan a million planet, planets. They're planet, planet for everybody. They made it seem like you'd meet people too. Like, I know. Yeah. Randomly bumped into this guy. What are the odds? Like, one in a million. But then you couldn't. There was literally one in a million. <laughs> and you couldn't even do it though. So, yeah, never mind. I think seeing something like Star Citizen and seeing that and how much work, even though that is still in development, see how much work they've actually put into it. Even just playing this, it can eat the released versions right now and how good that's looking and what they're trying to achieve with it, the technology. 
that to me is more exciting. It's always been more exciting than No Man's Sky was, even though that's released now. It just seems like everything Star Citizen is is everything that No Man's Sky was promising. And it'll take maybe another year or two, but that's looking like it's going to deliver, hopefully. Yeah, um, yeah, interesting developments with the, the Games Awards and more inter interesting developments with the PlayStation Experience Expo and The Last of Us 2, the PS1 remaster, Death Stranding, Last of Us 2 though, come on, what an exciting time that we live in. Amazing, ah, yeah. blew my mind, I'm so happy. Because mm. it wasn't that long ago, um, completely blanked on the name of the actress that plays Ellie. Um, anyone? No. We know I, who uh, I mean. Yes, yes. We know who I mean. She she yes. said publicly that she hadn't been asked to do anything mm. for the next one if there was going to be a mm. next one. It wasn't that long ago because I remember being like, oh, that's, ah, but a, that's, bit, just that's a bit rubbish. But, but, but yeah, why you there no telling us stuff? But we know he knows the secrets to know. <laughs> we know it, we know it. But I was like, oh, well, maybe that's true. Half-Life 3 is the concept of that has mm. ruined future sequels of everything for me. Yeah. So I'm just like, if Ashley it's Johnson. Happening, I'm going to just believe it now. Probably. I'm we'll say yes. <laughs> yes. We'll say yes. Yes. What he said, All right, what go he with said. yes. I'll fact check it, and if it's wrong, I'll insert a bit here to say you were incorrect. It was not actually, or, or something like that. So don't worry, we'll fact check everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes. I'm actually believing that case because in the interview, like after it, they did like a post interview of the trailer. And in that, they mentioned how they literally got called to do the trailer. And then they did the right. trailer. So they were trying to keep things under wraps, mm, basically. I think they've probably been like world building and making oh, natural levels so before they do all the good. animations and stuff. I'm really excited for it. It did look impressive. What Wasn't that using their new engine as well? Would they be working on a new engine? Mm-hmm. New engine. So yeah. There was one, like, I don't, know, well, I don't know if it was that engine, but I knew that Guerrilla Games and... Kojima. Kojima, yeah, they've, yeah, they've, yeah. They've teamed up with their engine. What's it called again? It's called... Oh, I forgot what it's called now. Covenant or something Can't like that. Remember. Anyway. But they've created this fantastic new engine that they're working on. And I don't know if it, they're using the same engine. I, I doubt it's it because it's a completely different... Horizon Zero Horizon, Dawn. Yeah. And um, Death Stranding will be using the yeah. same engine, which is very exciting. Mm. But that trailer was amazing. Yeah, it looked, it looked incredible. Very like, cool. I've never played The Last of Us, and I watched that trailer, and I'm like, I'm going to play The Last of Us. Because oh, that trailer Anton, gave me chills. It. And I was like, yeah, I'm buying it. You oh, have yeah. to play it. It's so good. Yeah, I, Michael, coming from, from, from yourself, did you notice any flaws with the guitar playing? Uh, are we, what are we talking about? The Last of Us 2 yeah. trailer are we talking about here? Uh, I haven't watched it yet. <gasps> oh my oh. god. It's good. It I'm, good. Sitting, I'm, I'm sitting looking at the trailer right now and I've had a week where it's been very difficult to, to do very much of anything other than just get little bits and pieces of what's happening in the news. And um, yeah, I must admit though, I am hugely excited about The Last of Us Part 2, which for me is one of the biggest announcements of the year, coming pretty late in the year. I actually thought this would have been announced a little while ago. I was kind of surprised when we didn't hear in the summer any update on The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all kind of felt that it was coming. And I'd kind of almost, not written it off, but I'd put it to one side and thought, maybe maybe this is just, you know, this is going to be a while away and, and we're not going to see it. So, so it kind of came as a nice surprise for me the other day, even though I kind of knew it was there. It's a kind of strange way to, to look at it, but I didn't expect it at this time, so I was really excited to see that, that it's happening. Mm. And I will be watching the trailer in about 10 minutes. <laughs> the nice. thing that really caught me off guard is I was in the same boat. I'd written it off, because at the beginning of the uh, keynote, they started off with Uncharted. Uncharted, yeah. So they showed off Uncharted. I'm like, oh, that's Naughty Dog's business it started with. We won't see them for another yeah, 10 years. Exactly. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we've also got a Last of Us. I'm yeah. like, oh. I also don't have money. <laughs> Who cares? Also, one of the writers from Westworld is going to be working really? on The Last of Us 2, if you're a Westworld fan. Yep, then, certainly yeah, certainly am. Then you've got that also to look forward to. So the story's going to be pretty yeah. cool. All right. Intense, apparently. Two other games. Let It Die from Grasshopper. Looked cool. Free game on the PlayStation 4. Looks like a Kenny No More Heroes type game. And also the Resident Evil 7 demo, oh. Biohazard demo. Oh. I played the demo version on the VR. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, I must say. And you've downloaded I've, it, haven't you? I've got the demo. I've been playing it since what was it like six months ago or yeah. something that came out. I've played both yeah. update, like the update before and the original on my channel. And I'm gonna record the new update tonight. Whether I'll be able to finish it, I hear there's a very 
elaborate sequence mm -hmm. you have to perform with the dummy finger at last to finish the whole demo and get out of the house. So I really don't think I'm gonna be able to figure out my own, but I'll try. Mm. And then I, might I know what it is. To... I know what it is. So is it really elaborate and difficult? It is. I've heard it's like PT style. Well, it is, but you can get out of the house without doing some of that stuff. So you can still escape. You get a good ending right. and a bad. Oh, you get a normal ending and a bad ending, an infected one. But you can do that other stuff just to get this like, kind of bonus things oh, where you God. find out about the rest of the people. But yeah, it's. Uh, I've not played the actual normal version. I've only played the VR mm. version. But I think playing the VR version, I couldn't go back to the normal version just because it is creepy as I well. find mm. the normal version really scary. Oh, you know, please, I'm play kind of a veteran, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not what to, I'm going to get the actual game when it comes out, though. I'm yeah. quite hyped for it. It looks really, really cool. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, one last bit of hype from PlayStation, the possibility of the PS1 remastered, the NES Mini treatment. Crash Bandicoot? Oh, no. Oh, all right, sorry. So there's the they're, they're looking at the console, or obviously doing a remastered version. You are right. There was Crash Bandicoot announcement too, and Parappa the Rapper too. Yep. Parappa the Rapper, right <laughs> enough, yeah. What's it called? Loco something. Um, yeah, we've got Papa the Rapper, Patapon, and Loco Loco Freaking coming up. Patapon. Oh, I'm love it. Loco Loco. Like yes, bring back all You're the crazy beauty. Loco. <laughs> loco Loco. <laughs> yeah, they've been bringing Patapon, back. Patapon the Loco PS1, Rapper. Like old school PlayStation franchises, we've got Wipeout. Crash Bandicoot well, as well. I want my spirals um, back with oh. trophies. Oh, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff. Um, sorry, I'm like looking at here, so I'm just going to rapid fire for some of these. We've got new Ma Marvel vs. Capcom, Infinite. It's mm. like based on the MCU and L. We've got obviously Wipeout, Destiny, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Call of Duty, Oops. World Leagues, everybody's excitement. Oh, <laughs> They showed it wow. off after Crash Bandicoot and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, and then they showed it off Call of Duty and people are like, mm. where's the bathrooms? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Proper rapid fire, stop me if you have anything to say. Three, two, one, Yakuza Kwame. Um, Yakuza 6, Dangru V3, Near Autonoma. Um, Ease Origins, Dreadnought, Prey. Absolution, Online Melee, What Remains of Eden F Flinch. Nyx Machina. Let It Die, Marvel vs. Capcom, free for PlayStation Vita. Mother, bleed, eh, Mother Russia Bleeds for PlayStation Vita. Mark of the Wolves for PS4 and Vita. Surgeon Simulator VR. Lara Croft Go. <laughs> Windjammers. Star Blood Arena. Nya, or something like that. <laughs> MLB yeah. The Show 17. Horizon Zero Dawn. And Horizon, that yep. is it. Cool. Also, Danganronpa 3 is confirmed release for the West next year. If anybody else loves Danganronpa. What is that? Danganronpa? What's this? Danganronpa! It's Ooh. like, um... A Danganronpa! Danganronpa! <laughs> it's my, one of my favourite visual novels slash, like, solving stuff. It's kind of like Ace Attorney in its own right. really twisted, horrible way. Best thing ever, though. I've got so much merch. I love it. So, Danganronpa 3 is coming out next yes. year. Yes. There was a lot of nice. stuff as well. They showed off that a lot of that content, well, not a lot of it, some of it was coming to the Vita. Seemed like they were supporting it finally. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were just yeah. like, had one up on stage and they're like, yeah, this game's coming out. Oh, so buy a Vita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Vitas are good. Yeah, I love the Vita. Oh, it's one of my favourites. I love it. So all people are great. Uh, Praise sounds like it could be interesting. I'm quite inter I'm quite keen to see how Prey turns out. Um, that's one of one of, one of the lists for me. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great. I mean, we, it has been a great week of announcements. I mean, as we said at the start, you could literally talk about every part of that announcement, break it down, uh, break break down all the announcements, and we would be here for about seven hours. But we're going to have to move on. The Retro Corner, and it's Anton's turn. So, hello. Um, yes, on the last Retro Corner, <laughs> I managed to sell Michael a Bandai Wonderspawn. And, and which I'm, which I'm returning, which I'm returning, not to you, but I'm returning my eBay copy because there was some confusion where it was advertised as the uh, the Wonder Swan Crystal. That was the title, the mm. eBay title. So what do you think you're buying if you order a Wonder Swan Crystal? I'd say be clear. You'd think it was the Wonder Swan Crystal version, right? Because it's Wonder Swan Crystal. That is the name of the one. You know, it was Wonder Swan Crystal. It wasn't uh, like no, a no, crystal I got the... that looked like one or something, was it? It wasn't like <laughs> proper eBay. So I, I, I received the original Wonder Swan in the colour blue crystal. Oh. Um, yeah, that's not good. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's retired. We're sorted. We're sorted. If you want a tip for trying to track them down, look, put in Swan Crystal. 
all one word. That's I, right, yeah. That can bring them up. But anyway, I am planned to be evil, so I plan to sell another handheld. <laughs> and today we're talking about the SNK Neo Geo Pocket Color. Anybody familiar with them? So no. Them. Yes. So no. if you are not familiar, um, Neo Geo and SNK they made video games in the early 1990s. They were incredibly expensive. The console cost one grand, Oof. and the games cost two fifty each. Yeah. Um, what? But for your price, you were getting some of the greatest games of the time. It was a 64-bit console and looked fantastic. And that obviously failed because it was expensive. And then they made a CD console that was also expensive. And then they made another <laughs> CD console that was also expensive. Did and then know? eventually they were like, expensive? It's bad. Let's make a cheap console. <laughs> so they made, in 1998, they made a console called the Neo Geo Pocket. It was a little wee fabulous thing. It has just two buttons and a little wee an analog stick. It kind of looks like a Game Boy Advance a little bit. Very much so. Yeah. Um, for the time it was really advanced, keep in mind this came out a year after the Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Color is like an 8-bit console. It doesn't really look like an NES cell 8-bit game. Mm. This was 16-bit Mega Drive caliber graphics, what is quite impressive for the time. And as well as that, built into it, you had a calendar, you had alarms, and all that stuff, what's obviously unheard of compared to the consoles at the time. Mm. Um, the original Neo Geo Pocket was only out for a year. It kind of flopped because of third-party support, and that was only in Japan. But then a year later, they came out with the Neo Geo Pocket Color. It was kind of a refined version, obviously color. It was really cheap, it only cost like $80, which well, was very competitive to the Game Boy. And it was, obviously sm it was actually smaller than the Game Boy. 16-bit, mm -hmm. full-color graphics. And what was really interesting about it is it had Sega support. First console after the that's not Zega, Zega or the Gamecom, mm -hmm. um, that had Zega support so you could go ahead and get Sonic and you could also connect them up to a Dreamcast. Really? Yes. I um, didn't know about that. Because <laughs> essentially Zega was like, oh yeah, we can't seem to make these handheld things. <laughs> we should maybe just like add support for the other consoles. Yeah. Um, game library wise is absolutely incredible because they kind of learned their lesson with the first one, what only had nine games in a mm. year. When they released the color, they made it. They had 15 games. You sure this wasn't made by Nintendo? No. Nope. Right, um, <laughs> although the Nintendo did, unfortunately, <laughs> put up quite a fight to it. Nintendo does its amazing and had the Yeah, so it had amazing game support, obviously Zega, and then you had all the SNK classics like Metal Slug, King of Fighters, and it was just loaded full of games. Capcom supported it mm. heavily. Um, unfortunately, it just died because competition was very stiff at the time. Also, they had the Wonders One that was a very cheap console, and they had the Game Boy where Pokemon was in full swing, mm -hmm. and third-party support wasn't the best. But it's a fantastic console if you're looking for some first-party handheld exclusives. And in my opinion, it's like one of the most fun consoles to play because you've got a wee quick go on it before yeah. we recorded. Adds like a clicking knob, what is the most satisfying? Like, clicking knobs are always good, yes. Yeah. Like, just the build quality of these things, I think, are absolutely fantastic. And <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you're looking for a good handheld, they're quite cheap. They're actually selling them in the UK retailer CX, they've started selling them again. And mm -hmm. um, well, that's one of the first kind of retro consoles they've been selling. They're quite cheap. Tell us a price, and yeah. 30, 30 pounds, price. 30, 30 pounds, 30 pounds. 30 pounds. Does that come in the games or wow, no. that's as 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 is. So Michael's right I on that. I heard some kind of holler from Michael right. there. What's happening? What was that? Sorry. I heard you like. I, I thought I heard some kind of hollering noise from you there. <laughs> oh, I, I'm always hollering. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and there was no. I, I, I went wow when you uh, when you said the price of thirty pounds. I thought oh suddenly this could be interesting, and um, I I. Uh, I do know a little bit about the Neo Geo, and uh, it's interesting that you've um, that you can't. I didn't know there was cost-effective ways to pick up uh, a model of a Neo Geo, so that's that's pretty cool. I must admit. Yeah. So when it comes down to retro handhelds, this precedes a Game Boy Advance SP. I would say get a Game Boy Advance SP, then pick up a Neo Geo because the games that are on here are exclusive, and you can't find them on really many other consoles because. In 2001, SNK went bankrupt, and mm -hmm. um, that's why this thing didn't survive. But um, after that, a lot of these games were kind of lost and forgotten about. Mm -hmm. So, if you're looking for getting into SNK, this is where to start. It's an antique, a retro antique. And Metal Slug is genuinely a great game, so uh, it's worth it for that alone. It's got two of them. So fantastic! <laughs> Excellent. Good. Good. Uh, Clicky knobs are always good. There's the title for this week's show. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun. It's been great to hear uh, about everything that's been happening this week. It has actually been uh, un 
catch upable, unkeep upable. We haven't been able to process all the news this week, and I'm kind of going to have to spend a bit of time when I get some time over the next couple of days catching up because it's just so much of it. And um, I don't know, next week, this time next week, will we have anything to talk about or will we just be delving into this week's stuff again? Who knows? Well, well, guys, I don't even have time. Last Guardian next week. There's that, I've read reviews. And also, I don't even have time to tell you guys about Sona 2, which I played. Oh, hey, well, no. in, I in, like in the back, we're a mask one. In the back, <laughs> the lasagna. Wait, 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 wait. hold up, I, hold up, hold up. So, so did you say what did you say? Sonic Two, Dishonored. Oh, Dishonored Two. I was thinking, <laughs> what's happened here? Well, what what was this pre-order? How late late is your pre-order? Nineteen ninety two. That game came out. That's <laughs> years you've been waiting. So, Dishonored Two. You've, you you haven't had the chance, or you have? I have. I've played it. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. Right. So, are you going to save it for next week? Or are you going to yeah, tell us I'll now? Yeah, I'll talk about it next week. I've not played too much because I'm doing proper. Low chaos, nobody detecting me. I'm doing it properly, so I'm taking my time. <laughs> so you're going to be a really long time. So you're going to so. be there for a long time. Yeah. There's also Final Fantasy 15, which none of us have talked about. We could maybe talk about I've that next week. It, that's <laughs> I'm just looking at. I'm like, that looks like an incredible game that will take me far too long to play, exactly. so I won't play. <laughs> One last thing, Michael, before we finish off the thing, we, we need to choose the winner for the competition. Oh. Okay. So so yes, we uh, are giving away the Google Cardboard. Yep. And have we come up with a winner? Have you decided? Have you have you drawn the names from a hat? Uh, no, no really you not. just got a sound effect of a, like a drum or something. Oh, I can do the drum roll. I can get that all set up for us. That's no problem. Well, he's got uh, it right here. You, That's yeah, all he's, he's, got. he's got. Oh, you've got it. All right, go on then. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Oh wow, that is in the distance. <laughs> That's what he has. He doesn't. Have, nobody has the winner. Though. Wow. Okay. So c- when you send the audio through, please send that as well, so that uh, just record it into your microphone and send it through, and I'll I'll throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we've not got the winner. We'll just have to choose one. I, I don't know. We'll have to, I'll have to jump on iTunes and just choose one. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Well, I can. Do you want me to give you the names and we can pick one now quickly? Yeah, yeah, How do you choose, do that? Choose, choose, choose the names and just give us a number, and we'll just choose, choose a number between one and whatever. All right. Well, listen. I'm going to edit this down because <laughs> you know it's going to sell it. Doesn't like the worst sound part very fear. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Right. Hang on then. Let me get the names of all the reviewers. Uh, take, take it obviously my one. Take it like uh, any, any, anyone. With my anyone. one. There's probably going to be about two people. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, all right then. If I okay. Oh, I can't ask my dad. I can't hey, give him it. Okay, um, to choose one. There you go. Okay. Right. Um, so what we'll do then, to make it fair, we're going to get Rajiv to pick a winner of our competition. Now we have one... I'm going to... How am I going to do this and not make it sound terrible having four reviews? <laughs> so um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to highlight here to Rajiv the ones that he can pick from. And um, basically it's from there up. And then I'm going to say that he's got his, he's got his, he's picking a name now. Okay, so right, so Rajiv's going to pick the winner of our Google Cardboard competition. We've got the sound effect from Sean. Thank you for that, Sean. Hit it for us. Uh, one second, one second. Uh, where is it again? Go on. And the winner is Mario's bro. Yeah, yeah Mario's bro. It's a me, and Mario. Right, well, I've won the headset. So oh, well done then to Luigi. <laughs> Luigi, I think you're all right. I think I don't know if it, I don't know if we can accent. if we can really. Jeez, Luigi. I don't know if we can flood it into the podcast. Well. I said I don't think we're going to get any messages from any angry Italian plumbers anytime soon. I think we're safe enough. It's fine. It's all good. All right, so well done to Mario's bro. Thank you very much, guys. That's been episode six, and we will be back with an even more action-packed episode seven and Dishonored 2 review next week. Oh, my God, mind blown. Bye. Until next time.